This is uh, how to make a treble practice guitar, uh, version 2, my instructable. Uh, there's a previous version, version 1, um, which you can probably look up, um, but you don't have to. But this is, uh, version 2 is learning some of the lessons uh, from the first time I tried it. Uh, the basic idea is that uh, I travel a lot for work. Um, so I wanted a guitar that I could play sort of in my hotel room that I could easily take with me without carrying a guitar case uh, around the world. Um, so I just wanted something that I could practice with uh, that would also be really quiet uh, because it's going to be used in a hotel room. Um, so a lot of the travel guitars that are sold on the market are, they're more expensive. Um, they're they're supposed to be sound good, so they're supposed to they make a little more noise, which might be hard to play in a in a in a hotel room, and also they're still pretty big. Um, so the idea is to make the guitar as small as possible, uh, and also quiet. Uh, so basically, the idea is that with a normal guitar, um, you have a lot of parts of the guitar that you know they're they're for the sound of the guitar, but they're they, they're, they're not really used in playing. You don't necessarily need like this part of the guitar uh, to practice. Um, so what you really need is from the, the bridge here um, to the, set, the nut here. You just need really need the neck if you just want to play the guitar. Um, and you can sort of see how you might be able to cut off sort of uh, this part of the guitar, this part of the guitar. So that was the basic idea um, and try to make it as small as possible. Uh, so, uh, the final product uh, looks like this. This is what I ended up with. Um, you can see I removed the parts of the guitar that, uh, that you don't necessarily need. Also, moved the headstock uh, back to the back here uh, so that it's this much shorter also. Um, so, the way it's basically made is uh, here's the guitar I bought. I bought this on auction. Uh, you can get um, guitars on eBay and stuff uh, pretty cheaply. This one cost only about $30. Uh, it was damaged. There was some damage on the back. Uh, you can see the damage here. Um, those spots down towards the bottom of the guitar on the back. Uh, so it was, it was really cheap for that reason. Um, but I wasn't going to use the back anyways, so, you know, that much better. Um, you, you actually probably want a slightly cheaper guitar because um, you want a, a plywood guitar. You want a, a laminate top instead of a solid top uh, because it's more stable and stronger, actually, um, and easier to sort of cut up without worrying about too much woodworking. Uh, you could do it with a solid top, probably, but um, laminate's just fine, especially since we don't really care what it sounds like. Um, so the way to, to make it, uh, what I did basically was, uh, first I cut off the back, you can see there. I uh, just took a saw and cut it up. Um, and then removed all the bracing from both the back and the front. Um, this is to, because you're going to be doing some construction. You, you can figure out um, exactly how much you need to do of that sort of thing. Um, and also cut off the, the headstock uh, right above the, the nut there. Um, so then, uh, basically, uh, you cut off the, the sort of the upper and lower bouts of the guitar um, and also put a piece of, of wood on the back um, at an angle like that uh, to make it as small as possible. Um, you could cut this piece of back out of the back of the guitar. Mine was damaged, um, as I said earlier, so I couldn't do it in that case. But uh, yeah, just just stick a, a piece of that's going to be the sort of the, the new back of your guitar um, from the back and the front, um, and then cut out the this what's going to be the sides. Uh, you can just measure uh, those triangles shaped parts from the previous um, step. Um, and figure out how big of the sides you need um, and just cut them out from the back or, or a different different wood if you're going to use a different wood um, and then stick them onto the sides uh, so you've got sort of a, a box this is, it has a little tiny sound box 
um, which will make a, a little bit of resonance in the guitar, but but um, really not as much, not nearly as much as a, a, a real guitar would have. Uh, one thing that's really important um, at the when you're putting it together, the sound box part of it together, um, is that the, it's important not to, to change the neck angle because if the, the action is already right the way it was when it was made, um, it can get screwed up if you if the neck this neck angle changes. Um, so it's when you cut off the back and the sides, uh, you lose the rigidity and it's easy for for this this the bridge part to go up it uh, to go up or down. Um, so when you're constructing it, um, it's best to, to try to keep it really rigid um, and get the sides in especially uh, before um, before it can change its neck angle. I actually uh, had a problem with that and the neck angle got too low, which meant the action got too low and it got really buzzy and I had to make another saddle in the end, um, a much higher saddle than the one that was on the guitar. Uh, I just bought a piece of hard plastic and made this, this saddle. Um, but that's something that you should really uh, keep in mind when you're, if you're going to make one of these. Um, you take the headstock and cut off the, that, you need to cut that angle down, um, you'll see why in the end, um, and then cut off all the or sand down to, to wood because you're going to stick it onto the back. Um, and then I glued and also screwed the headstock onto the back there at the bottom so the strings come around. The strings are tied up here and then they come around and you, you do the tuning back here on the back of the guitar. Um, there's a picture of it with the strings and, and tuners back all in place. Uh, for the this end of the guitar, above the nut, um, it's, I'm not sure what the exact best system in the world is for attaching um, the strings to this end, but you need something that you can t either tie or attach the strings up on this end. Uh, so what I did is I got a bolt, a non-threaded bolt, and, and put it through a bunch of eye hooks here. Um, and and uh, put the, nuts on the, the nut on the side so it's fastened here. And then I just tied the strings on, um, as you can see in that picture. Uh, and there's from the back. Um, that's seems to be a pretty good system. Uh, you may, if you want to make one of these, you may find a, a better system, but uh, that one works for me. Um, so there's the back. I, um, this is, I put a coat of, a couple coats of varnish on it um, to make it look nice and protect the wood a little bit. Um, and also I painted on those uh, sort of painted on bindings um, around the edges, uh, these parts, this black paint, uh, just to make it look a little nicer. Um, and it looks okay. Um, for the butt end of the guitar, this is something I've always I struggled with in the first one and struggled with again in this one in making the second version. Um, the, the strings have to come around this way. Um, and if they can't move smoothly around this end, uh, they you, a lot of pressure builds up here when you when you turn the tuners, um, and the strings break really easily. Um, and this is the system that I've come up with this time is I found these aluminum tubes uh, for sale, and I just uh, glued, uh, screwed two of them on here so that there's sort of a, a roundness here that there's not too many there's no angle that's too too sharp here so the strings can sort of move. But when I tune the guitar, I actually I have to be a little careful and sort of, um, you know, do a lot of pulling because it, it doesn't it doesn't move all, as smoothly. It would be nice to have sort of rollers or something right here, but uh, I haven't been able to find any any rollers that would work well. Um, but that's that. Th this works okay. Um, if you come up with a better way of doing it, uh, I, I leave it in the comments. I'd be I'd be interested to hear about that. Um, so there's a few pictures of that end of the guitar, uh, and basically um, once it's strung up and everything, uh, there's the final product right there. Um, running back.
Uh, it's 72 centimeters long. Um, once it's as short as, as I've been able to, to make it, uh, it just fits uh, right into my suitcase like that. Um, it's very quiet, um, especially in the bass. Um, the bass, you, apparently you really need a, the soundboard and the resonance um, of the shape of the, the bigger guitar just to get the bass notes at all. Um, it really doesn't sound uh, like anything. In, I mean, you almost can't hear the bass. You can hear the treble strings a little bit, but I, I wanted it to be as quiet as possible, so um, that's actually good for me. Uh, another thing is, uh, uh, in order to play the guitar, um, I play classical guitar, so uh, you have it on your knee, and you, you always use like this <laughs> non-existent part of this guitar just to stabilize the guitar. So I really found you need I needed a strap, so I just uh, sort of tied a a little strap on here, um, and then I just play it like this. Um, I'd be sitting down, but so you can see it, I'm standing up. Um, and it's actually pretty, it stays where it's supposed to stay, um, and it plays. It, it, it's not the same as playing a normal guitar, but it's, it's pretty good. Um, to give you an idea what it sounds like, So you can see it, it kind of has a really uh, low bass sound, um, uh, but uh, you can you can hear it and you can practice with it, um, so it's okay. So I hope that you've found this useful. Um, if you make one of these, I'd love to uh, see it about it in the comments. Um, and any ideas you have for improving it would be great. Um, and thanks for watching.